Okay. So, hi there. I'm Mr. Finlier, uh, along with Ethan Atkinson. Hello. We're going to be talking a bit about power tools and general safety. They sort of go together. So, uh, this is something we will use fairly rarely, uh, but will get used occasionally. So, what is this? This is an uh, orbital sander. So, this portion here just moves in a random orbital pattern. Very, essentially just a vibration. Toggle switch on top, on and off with a dust collection bag. So this is going to take your sandpaper, hold it against the surface, smooth it out, uh, instead of you sitting there and hand sanding it. So anything actors are gonna handle, uh, any like railings, for example, that have splinters on the end, you want to sand so you don't give them lockjaw. Excellent. Um, safety things to keep in mind with this particular device. Uh, so don't keep it too near your hand, because if you slip, it is gonna take skin off. Don't, you know, have it where it can come off the board and onto your hand. Uh, generally, this all is a don't touch zone. Excellent. Uh, safety glasses with all of this, because chips and bits will fly. Yes. And that is going to produce dust as well, so if you're in a small enclosed area, perhaps a mask. Yeah. Although we will probably do a lot more sanding on the sidewalk outside the theater. That's our best ventilation area. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, you are wearing safety glasses. I am. Right now. Um, you'll be getting a pair of these this year. Anytime you're Ooh. using any of these uh, these power tools, certainly, you'll want those uh, as well. And generally, whenever you're doing any construction, you'd like to run just uh, as well. personal protective equipment? Uh, sure, yeah. PPE. Glasses, protect your eyes. Uh, hearing protection, ear goggles, protect your ears. I can't hear anything now. Uh, as well as gloves, nice uh, heavy canvas or leather gloves uh, to protect when handling uh, anything that might be sharp. Uh, Generally with rotational tools, you actually don't want to wear them because if your glove gets snagged, it can take your hand with it. So like chop saw, uh, circular saw, no gloves. Excellent. Fantastic. So yeah, you'll be making sure, and that's one of the major things that we'll be doing this year is making sure that we maintain that safety because it doesn't do any good to build something if someone dies. Your life is more... Or, or the Great Wall alive. of China is pretty great though. <laughs> Thank you, Ethan. You're so useful. I am. Uh, talk about this. Circular saw. Uh, this is this, and like a table saw combined. So plug it in, you have your blade here, you can set your depth and your angle. So if you want to cut on a 45, now your blade's on a 45, you cut like that. Uh, as you cut, the wood's gonna press here, lift your guard back. Don't hold this open with the saw running because you know now you're exposing a blade to fingers. It's got a little notch right here that you can use to line up on your mark and follow your mark when you mark out your wood ahead of time. Uh, and it will spit chips and dust out the back. So again, goggles. It's also loud. Some people don't. I recommend hearing protection. Excellent, fantastic. Uh, safety, don't touch the spinny bit. Uh, there is, a, with any uh, spinning blade, there's a chance it can bind, which is when uh, you just get too much torque between the, uh, the blade and whatever you're cutting, and in that case, the blade can stop, just let go of the trigger. It can try and kick back on you, so keep it pressed down into whatever you're cutting. Excellent. And the trigger, as we said, was yes, right the trigger here. Trigger is right Maybe there. A little bit hard to see some, the angle there. Some circular saws are equipped with a trigger lock, mm -hmm. so you can pull the trigger, press a button, it will depl depress the trigger. Pulling the trigger again will let go of the trigger. That one is not equipped. That is the one you will most likely be using. Yeah. Uh, the, the saw that we'll use the very most often is this chop saw, which we're going to demo in just one minute here. I want to go over some other safety elements with some of the tools we went over in the last video. Um, this, as I said, this is the one that scares me. This no. is, uh, yeah, well, I, well, they both scare me, but this one's in my room. Um, this is, these are bolt cutters. Uh, you use them by opening it up, and that opens up a space there in between. Notice I'm not pointing to it with, uh, with my fingers like I would with anything else, because if you get a finger in there and it closes, you will lose that finger. This is meant for cutting through um, hardened iron, and cutting through your finger would be like so easy. So we could um, demo it as well. But, uh, <laughs> Not on fingers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a device. Uh, there's a no. I think we'll we'll we don't use it that frequently, but just to know what mm -hmm. it is, and it's it's really not something. Even though it looks sort of like Pac-Man, it is not something to play around. There is also uh, in here a pinch point. Mm -hmm. Don't stick your hand in there either as it closes. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Because there's a great deal of pressure there, um, and then. 
the pieces you're most commonly going to be using that need some safety. This is the um, the staple gun. What should they know about that? Uh, don't. It has a short range. Don't point it and pull the trigger like my father does at me. <laughs> uh, because if they don't have glasses on or if it hits them wrong, it's going to puncture skin. It's going to hit you in the eye. And you're going to lose your eye. Don't. Just don't. Uh, don't put your hand keeping off the trigger, don't put your hand under it. If you're stapling through something thin, don't put your hand on the back side just in case. Generally, don't put your hand on the back side of any projectile. Um, and it's heavy, don't swing it at someone. Absolutely. Other than that. And then you have the uh, drill on yes, this. Yes, I do. What should we know about that one? Because we will be using that a lot. Uh, drills are fairly safe. Uh, generally, they're the first thing that you start out with in any shop or robotics class where we are. The main thing is, if you're driving a screw, don't put a ton of pressure on it, keep good control of it, because it's happened to me, it's happened to my father. Either you've got a drill bit, uh, like a, a drill bit in, or a screw bit in, and it slips off, and it just takes a chunk out of your thumb, and that's not fun. So if you can, keep fingers away. If you do have to hold the screw, hold it up near the top of the screw, where it can't slip off and get you, and manage your pressure that you're putting in with the drill. So if it slips off, you're not going to damage yourself. Excellent. And again, don't swing it at anyone. The last thing we want to talk about real quick here, so this spool is what we call tie line. Um, it's, uh, you use it a ton in the theater. Um, just let me cut this with real quick. Uh, the, the bolt cutters. <laughs> there should be a pair of scissors hanging over there. Uh, uh, far side. That's great. So watch this that. right over here. Uh, uh, so tie line is uh, used uh, for lots of different purposes uh, in the theater. Um, but one of them... Scissors. Don't cut yourself with those. Yes. Yes. And we use these a lot too, actually. I should have mentioned these in the tool video. Um, but one of the main things we do is, uh, for security's sake, when, it, when you are up on the ladder uh, with a crescent wrench and you're doing lights, you're going... Or any tool. Yeah. So you're going to secure that tool with the tie line straight through Most the Most tools have, have a, uh, a little hole, hole in the bottom for expressly this purpose. Yeah. So tie any sort of knot securely. I'm going to be a heathen and tie two granny knots. Yeah. Tie it off, use a longer piece so that you have room, tie it to your belt loop, I tie it to my wrist frequently, tie it if you're working in one area for a long time, you can lash it to the ladder or to the railing yep. where you're working. But that way, because things fall all the time. Don't kill your actors. Yeah, exactly. Or, or him. Or, or me, or your other tech crew. Yeah, don't kill your other tech crew, because yeah. <laughs> they won't work for you anymore. <laughs> exactly. Tie line, use it. So the, the last thing we want to take a look at here is a demo of this saw, specifically talking about how it works um, and also how to make sure you're, that you're well protected because people will be making use of this saw. So let's cut there. All right, so on the chop saw, uh, remember the circular saw, uh, it's very similar in that it has a circular blade. Uh, it's very different in that it's not a circular saw. So when you pull down, I'll pull up on the guard. Again, same with the circular saw. Don't pull the guard up, especially when it's running. You have your, and it is unplugged, uh, you have your blade here with your wood cutting teeth. Keep your saw sharp because that's when it's going to bind and pull on stuff and tear stuff up. Guard, here's your trigger. Turn it on and off. It's a hold down trigger. Keep holding the trigger uh, until you've completed your cut. Let back up, let off the trigger. This is your table here. This is your fence. So you rest your block on the table, put it against the fence to keep it square to your uh, cut area. You've got this yellow zone. This is the absolutely do not ever, for demonstration purposes, do not ever put your hands in here. Uh, it's also got, you generally want to stay outside here as well. If you're cutting something small, keep your hand as far away as possible from your cut and keep it held tight against the fence. The nice thing about the saw is that it spins this way, so it will pull your wood down and into the fence, secure it a little better. It can also cut on angles this way. There's a knob here to loosen. Then there's a little trigger under here. Let up on that trigger. You can move it just a little bit. It also has these notches demarcating common areas. So you've got zero, 15, 20, 30, and 45 degrees. Those are your common angles. Generally, you're only going to be using 0 and 45. It does that in both directions. Once you set, let your trigger up. It'll either lock if you're notch and tighten your knob back down. It'll also, and you'll use this much less frequently, 
There is a knob in the back that you can loosen and angle the saw this way if you need a cut on an angle that way. There is a dust collection bag in the back. Uh, check it and empty it. Uh, if you need to lock the saw down, for example, if you're carrying it, there's a pin back here. Push it in, the saw is now locked down. You can grab it by the carrying handle, pick it up, and take it with you. Uh, for now, we're going to do just a cut on a scrap of wood. Place your block against your fence, down, keeping your hand as far away as you can. Pull down so you can line up on your mark. I don't have a mark. And line up. The blade does have a thickness. It's called your kerf, because the blade has width. So as you cut, whichever end is your scrap, you want to put all of your blade on that side because it will remove material. So line up the good side of your line with the blade. Get your line, pull the trigger, and cut slowly and carefully. Don't chop. It's not a karate chop. We've had people do that. Don't do that. Alright, wait for the blade to stop spinning, pull your parts out, discard your scrap, take your good piece, and affix it to whatever you're going to affix it to.